why did you decide to discontinue your ketogenic diet? What differences in your health and performance have you noticed since? And what does your diet look like these days? Well, I, um, I discontinued a ketogenic diet after three years. In the moment when I discontinued it, it was basically like I was just missing my all singing, all dancing, famous curry stir fry, which was like probably my staple meal in college and med school. And, you know, throughout most of life, that was like probably my favorite meal. And, um, so on a bed of rice, I would put this huge curry stir fry that had like all of these awesome vegetables and very spicy and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, you couldn't eat that in ketosis, even without the rice, because just that volume of vegetables would usually boot you out. And certainly with the rice, you were going to be gone. And I was just kind of like, you know, I just miss this. I just need to start eating this again. Also, I was kind of missing certain fruits. I felt like I was just like not, again, I didn't feel like I needed them from a health wise perspective. I just felt like I just miss them. I enjoy eating these things. I haven't had a banana in three freaking years, except for the odd one, you know, or something like that. So it just, for me, it was just that, that was what it really came down to. And, you know, I think the impact of leaving, you know, different people have different responses to a ketogenic diet. I think some people at my end of the spectrum respond as well as anyone can respond. I mean, for me, it was, I mean, I, I, it's hard to articulate, right? I mean, every, on every dimension, things just got better. I mean, my mental clarity, my resilience, my biomarkers, my performance, eventually it did take a while. I did, certainly, took a, certainly took a step backwards for the first three months, then regained mostly aerobic function. It was probably 18 months before I surpassed anaerobic function. And I was actually with Steve Finney last week, and we were talking about this, that I really regret not taking muscle biopsies throughout that three-year journey. I think that could have been quite insightful. But I also know having now put people on ketogenic diets and been around a lot of, you know, people on ketogenic diets that I, I was about as good a responder as you're going to see. And there, there are others that have responded as well as me, but, but there are lots of people who don't respond this well. And so, you know, going back to the previous question, I think that's where you have to have a little bit of humility, which is like, you know, no offense to the keto community out there who I'm probably pissing off at the moment, but I'm highly put off by the, this view that like ketosis is for everybody. And if, you know, if you try a ketogenic diet and it doesn't work for you, well, you screwed it up or something. And it's just like, that just strikes me as patently false. So anyway, that, I don't know if I answered the question was the question, what, okay. Oh, then the other question is, what do I do now? Now I mostly vacillate between time restricted feeding and non-time restricted feeding with a much simpler set of principles on how I eat, which is just try not to eat junk. So I don't really restrict my carbohydrates deliberately at all anymore, which I know is going to sound crazy to people listening to this, but I just restrict bad carbohydrates. And as a general rule, if it comes in a package, it shouldn't be eaten. So like the Weathens, like there's, there's no <laughs> rule for Weathens in the diet, right? Graham I'm sure there's cracks. a Weathens tree somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> our paleo ancestors. Were you there? Were you there? Are you sure there wasn't a tree? You, you know, it's a very good point. I wasn't there. It's quite possible that Weathens grew on trees with, with graham crackers. My favorite, my go-to starches, you know, I definitely like potatoes and I definitely like rice. And I probably will, uh, you know, if there's seven days in a week, uh, four of them, I'll be eating those with at least one of my meals. So yesterday, I usually am not eating breakfast still. So yesterday, you know, woke up, you know, did my morning routine, rode the Peloton for 45 minutes, had, you know, made a, my coffee, my special fancy coffee after that and putzed around and like worked and, you know, whatever, did all my, you know, saw patients, did this, that, and the other thing. Came back to my apartment at two, still hadn't eaten and then made a shake. So I make this shake called, that I call the Peter Kaufman, which I wrote about on the blog like six years ago, which is, uh little bit of heavy cream, almond milk, frozen strawberries, spoon of almond butter, and then a you can protein, chocolate protein, uh, with a ton of ice. So it makes, we're going to have one right after this, by the way, in about five minutes. So hope nice. you're salivating for the Peter Kaufman. And so that's a pretty high fat shake where the only carb you're getting is the super starch, which basically doesn't act like a carb. You obviously get some in the almond butter and there's virtually none in the frozen strawberries. And then that evening, yesterday evening, so I didn't need anything else the rest of the day. Obviously just, you know, I had like water or something like that. And then in the evening I went out for dinner with a friend and we went to a Greek place and 
you know, I had a smoked salmon appetizer. It did come with like little pita chip breads, which I didn't eat. Although in truth, I will often eat those because I freaking love them. But just yesterday, I didn't feel like eating them. And then I got a lamb entree that came with some potatoes, these lemon potatoes that these guys make that are ridiculous. You know, no dessert, came home, had some tea. That was it. So when I look at my CGM from yesterday, my highest glucose was about two hours after dinner, maybe an hour after dinner, but it was about 117 milligrams per deciliter was my peak glucose yesterday. And the other thing I really pay close attention to is what was my peak nighttime glucose. So by the time I went to bed, it was down to 90. And, you know, I think my peak, my peak nighttime yesterday was 95, which makes me really happy because I almost always see my highest glucoses at night. They're almost always, I think, in response to cortisol. So today we'll have one of those shakes for lunch. Maybe we'll go work out, then we'll shake. And then for dinner, I don't know what we'll do, but it'll be basically the same sort of thing. It'll probably be, oh, I also had a big salad yesterday. I forgot to mention that. The, the smoked salmon, the big ass Greek salad the, in a bowl the size of my head, and then the, uh, the lamb with the potatoes. So... I'm kind of a boring eater, actually, which is I like to have lots of vegetables, including salad. I usually rotate, you know, lamb, beef, fish, and then at least half the time, if not more, maybe a bit of potato or rice. I think you might have tipped your hand when you you did a regimented three-year, pretty much all on ketogenic diet. And what kicked you out of the ketogenic diet was your longing for vegetables and fruit, more or less. And then on the exercise side, not doing the muscle biopsies or something like that. So I think most people might be going for the chocolate cake. Although you did, you did have one. I had that excursion. one day. Yeah. yeah. Of, or I had six desserts in one sitting. You know, I, I'm sure I'll go anytime I'm with my like keto friends, like last week when I was up with Steve Finney and a whole bunch of the people from Verta Health, I swear I was like, that's it, man. I'm going back on a keto, you know, I'm going to go back on a ketogenic diet. Yeah. And then I got home and I was like, nah, <laughs> I don't feel like it. <laughs> and that's just, and honestly, part of it, this is a total cop out, but part of it is just like, it's a pain in the ass with kids. I don't want to get into weird stuff with my kids again. Cause I remember when I was on ketogenic, my, my daughter was always asking me why I didn't eat this, why I didn't eat that. And I feel like, and again, I'm not knocking a ketogenic diet and I think I could, I could do it and do it in a responsible, sustainable way as far as my kids. But I like now talking to my, only my daughter, my sons, obviously we don't talk about this stuff yet. They're not old enough, but, but with Olivia, there's definitely a lot of talk of like the other day, like, you know, it was her birthday and, and so there was a ton of ice cream left in the fridge and she came home from school and she's like, daddy, can I have a bowl of ice cream? And I was like, hell no, you can't have a bowl of ice cream. What the hell are you talking about? She's like, well, mommy lets me. And I was like, I'm pretty sure mommy doesn't let you have ice cream before dinner. And don't you get how bad that stuff is? Like you get to have that once in a while as a treat, but like that didn't grow on a tree that didn't, you know, come out of, you know, like that's fake food. Right. And, and so it's, there's still the opportunity to talk about that. And, and, you know, I like that they're seeing me eat a broader array of food now than I would be if I were on a ketogenic diet. Cause when I was on a ketogenic diet, the other thing is I was on such a high calorie ketogenic diet that I had to eat so much weird stuff. Like I had to basically eat a tub of sour cream every day just to <laughs> get my 4,500 calories that I needed. What was your ratio of a ketogenic diet a lot off, but for epileptic? Uh, yeah, I was, um, they talk about carbs to pro uh, Yeah. So I did it in to total percent. I did it as a percent of total calories and or I fat was, to protein and carbs. Yeah. I was about 90% fat about 7% protein, 3% carbohydrate. And the reason that my percents were so high in fat is that my total caloric intake was probably 44 to 4,500 calories a day. But I was exercising like crazy. Yeah, I always, I marvel at what a ketogenic diet sort of technically is. I mean, if you're looking at like the Hopkins ketogenic diet where it's, it's four to one yep. fat to protein and carbs in terms of, I think, by weight. So if you're, if you're eating 100 grams of protein and carbs, you're eating 400 grams of fat, which is 3,600 calories. So you're looking at a 4,000 calorie diet, probably close to what you were, maybe where you're doing, yeah. right? 75 grams of protein, maybe 25 carbs, maybe lower. And you're doing that. And you don't realize like that does take effort. 
It's not just like, it, I'm just going to eat some meat yeah, and I'm going to eat some vegetables it's and some huge, nuts and seeds. It's huge effort unless you have the luxury of, you know, a chef or prepared meals. Like, I don't know if Quest is doing it anymore, but they were at one point doing like pre-made two to one, three to one, four to one keto meals. And I think they were doing it with the Charlie Foundation actually for the kids with epilepsy. And I ate a bunch of those, like just as trying them out. And I mean, they were great. I could mainline those things. If, if someone were like feeding me those all day, yeah, I could go back on ketosis with, but maybe I'm just too lazy. <laughs> I don't know.